Okay, geometry, chapter two, section four, deductive reasoning. Uh, you'll notice earlier in the chapter we did inductive reasoning. The difference in the two, uh, inductive reasoning is based on statements that could be true or might not be true. Deductive reasoning comes from actual facts, data, statements that are true. For example, I think the best example here is in the book on page 115. If we look at real world example number one, letter A says every time Katie has worn her favorite socks to a softball game, she has gotten at least one hit. Katie is wearing her favorite socks to the game tonight, so she concludes that she will get at least one hit. That's a valid conclusion. She thinks that's going to be the case, but it's not necessarily the case because we know that stats say that eventually she's not going to get a hit. So that would be inductive reasoning based on a statement that's possibly true, but may not always be true. Then looking at B, it says, if John is late making his car insurance payment, he will be assessed a late fee of $50. John's payment is late this month, so he concludes that he will be assessed a fee of $50. That is absolutely true. That's data, that's fact, it's in the contract, he knows if he's late, it's $50. Since we now know the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning, let's go ahead and take a look at something that's called the law of detachment. The, if I could write, the law of detachment. I'm a wonderful speller. D E T A C H. Sorry, parents, if you're watching this, I know that you're excited that your math teacher, your child's math teacher, is having trouble spelling, but that's all right. I'm just human. The law of detachment can be best described with an example. So let's say you were given the statement um, given. We're going to start seeing given and prove. Let's say you were given the statement that if a car is out of gas, then it will not start. Pretty basic. That makes sense. If a car is out of gas, then it will not start. So then you're asked to take a look at the example that Sarah's car is out of gas. Now, I ask you to make a conclusion using the given statement. Again, given, if a car is out of gas, then it will not start. You've been asked to give a conclusion about Sarah's car, and that statement is Sarah's car is out of gas. So I'm going to hit pause, and I want you to draw me a conclusion, or write me a conclusion in words. The conclusion that I'm going to come up with is because Sarah's car is out of gas, then Sarah's car won't start. You know, the initial statement had nothing to do with Sarah's car. But we can use the law of detachment to prove that because Sarah's car is out of gas, then Sarah's car won't start according to the statement. Now let's take a look at the law of syllogism. S Y L L O G I S M. Now we're going to start piecing things together. The law of syllogism is going to use three different statements. So let's say you were given 
again, we're always going to start with given information. Let's say you were given the following statement. If you get a job, if you get a job, then you earn money. Makes sense. If you get a job, then you earn money. Then they're going to give you another given statement that says, if you earn money, then you get or you will buy a car. Okay, let's say you're going into high school and you want to save up to buy a car. So now let's take that statement and combine it and make a valid conclusion. Again, you're combining two statements. Let's make a valid conclusion from those two statements using the law of syllogism. I'll hit pause here for just a minute to let you decide what your statement might be. And we're back. So because those two things are equal to the same thing, and let me do that. This is the same in both statements, which means this is also the same according to the law of syllogism. So your valid conclusion would be if you get a job, then you will buy a car. Law of syllogism. Two statements combine what's the same. If you get a job, then you earn money. So if you earn money, then you will buy a car. And then we will combine, if you get a job, then you will buy a car. All right, that should cover the difference in the two reasonings, difference between inductive and deductive, and also covers the law of detachment and law of syllogism. Just about eight minutes.